covering the two uh, second degree case. I work through all the details, so I'm not going to go through all the details of the n dimensional case. Uh, so we'll just talk very briefly about um, n dimensions, but we'll talk about another way to think about the two dimensional case. So this is 22b in the textbook. So there is a Ronskian. So the Ronskian of y1 and y2 is the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. So this is the Ronskian of y1 and y2. And this should not be equal to 0 when y1 and y2 are linearly independent. It's what I wrote down. Oh, oh yeah, it's named after. Yeah. Oh. I th think his name would be Ronsky. So it's that thing defined right there on the board. That's the Ronsky. Uh, that's the two. Uh, if you have two functions, that's the two function Ronsky right there. If okay. we have three functions, it'll look slightly different. Just add a, like another row. We'll add another row and another column. So there'll be a y3, and we'll actually have to get to the third, uh, the second derivative. So basically, you kind of, as you drop down rows, you get more derivatives, and as you go across columns, you get like y1, y2, y3, y4, like that. It'll always need to be a square, or else you can't take a determinant. So determinant's property is only square matrices, so they're all have to, having to be square. So our u1 and u2 actually relate to this uh, Ronskian right here. So this is going to use Kramer's rule. And this gets also back to pre-calculus 1. <coughs> we looked at Kramer's rule. You probably saw it in linear algebra as well. So Kramer's rule says that u1 prime is equal to 0y2 qx over a, actually be over a2, y2 prime, divided by w. And u2 prime will be y1, y1 prime in the first column, and then 0, qx over a2 in the second column, over w. So how do these work? <clears throat> what is on top of W? So if we look at the uh, numerator here, numerator is W with column 1 swapped with 0 qx over a2. So if you remember Kramer's rule, you're basically going to take that uh, determinant, uh, but then you swap out whatever variable you're looking for, that column, with the constant column. And what in the world am I talking about constant column? We're going to go back to the system of two equations and two unknowns for a minute. I'll use the blue marker here. So if I translate back to the uh, variables we're used to, it looked like a I think we did ax1 plus bx2 equals c. Ooh, these are going to be some bad letters. We'll go a1x1, a2x2 equals c1, and then a2x1 plus a2. Dang, can't use a's again. I'll go with b's. So we had our coefficient matrix, which was, I 
think we use capital D for that matrix. A1, A2, B1, B2, and then X1 equaled, you would swap out column one for the constant column. So we swapped out the first column for C1, C2, and then the second column was the original A2, B2, and it was divided by D. So this was Kramer's rule. We basically took out a column and replaced it by the constant column I put a box around. We're doing the exact same thing now, except things are not constants anymore. So we're going to this look at our system here. So I will put a box around our constant column right here. So that's our constant column. And when we look at our there's first column, second column right there of the matrix. So now let's go back and look at what we have. <coughs> so there's W right there. It's the Y1, uh, Y2 on the first row, Y1 prime, Y2 prime on the second row. And all we're gonna do is swap out one column for that zero <coughs> Q over A2. So that's all we're doing right here. So I just wanna take it back to the good old days in pre-calculus one class where we did Kramer's rule. All right, so that's Kramer's rule and you just swap out your either first or second column with that constant column. Now what happens if you have degree more than two? Oh, we should finish off. Uh, that was just U1 prime. How would you recover U1 from U1 prime? Do an integral. Just take an integral. They'll be, in our variables we had, they'd be in dx. So the <coughs> integral U1 prime dx, and then U2, same thing. So that's U1 and U2. So you'll get information about the derivatives of them. Uh, and when you do this, you can omit the constants of integration. constants the constants belong on the homogeneous terms or the homogeneous solutions which we called yc which was uh, b1 y1 plus b2 y2 those are where the constants go what we're finding here are basically we're going to modify B1 and B2. So I'm going to talk about the n-dimensional case, and then we're actually only going to solve some... Oh, we should do a higher dimensional problem. I only have degree 2 problems written in my notes, so I'll grab a degree 3 or 4 problem, and we'll do that one. Uh, next class. So we'll just, I'll talk about, well, let's just solve the two degree two problems, then I'll talk about the nth degree on Monday, and so we'll solve some nth degree on Monday. Thank you. So we're going to solve y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals sine of e to the negative x. How would you know that you have to use this uh, variation of parameters or the Ronskian instead of what we looked at in chapter 21? The left side, all you notice looking at the left side is it's going to be a linear ODE. So it's all about the right side. So what about that Q of X function means that I can't just look at the linearly independent derivatives? Is it because it's going to have Yep, it will have an infinite amount of derivatives. 
So just think about the chain rule. Uh, it'll be, let's go ahead and compute a couple derivatives so we can be sure it's going to actually have the infinite derivatives. Maybe we get lucky and we don't have that situation. So we'll take a couple derivatives to make sure. So derivative of sine is cosine e negative x times derivative e of the negative x, which is negative e negative x. So it's negative cos e negative x times e negative x. So q double prime. I have a product rule here. So derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. Sine e to the x times e to the negative x plus negative cos e negative x. Oh, I totally missed a chain rule there. Wow. <coughs> so derivative of negative cosine is positive sine e to the negative x times negative e negative x. That's the chain rule times e to the negative x. So that whole first part right there was u prime v. And now we have u v prime. So it's negative cos e to the negative x times derivative of e to the negative x. Negative e to the negative x. So we get negative e, add the powers together, negative 2x. plus cos e negative x, e negative x. So what we just picked up on our second derivative. <clears throat> so our first derivative basically picked up a e to the x times <coughs> cosine e to the x. We just picked up a e to the negative 2x now. If I took another derivative, I would see a e to the negative 3x show up. So if I keep going, I just keep getting these higher and higher, like e to the negative 4x, e to the negative 5x, e to the negative 6x times either sine or cosine. But either way, it's going to keep bumping up that power. So we're going to see infinite derivatives show up. So this is what it looks like. So infinite linear independent. terms. So we cannot go to the, just write a linear combination of infinite terms. That's not, you can't do that. So we're going to have to go to this variation of parameters and use the Ronskian. So that was basically just a check to make sure. So that was just basically classifying this. So we can't solve it with the other methods. All right, step one, I need to find the uh, homogeneous solution. So that was just like your quiz. Well, this problem wasn't on your quiz, but it, just the same exact way we, you did your quiz and every other problem you've done in the last week. So we're going to go for the homogeneous solution. y equals e to the mx. We're going to have m squared minus 3m plus 2. I'm skipping steps because you should have done enough problems by now that you're okay jumping right to this one. It's not very, once you do about five or six problems, it's not very exciting, that first step. Uh, this hopefully factors nicely to, yeah, both negative. All right, so m equals 2 or m equals 1. All right, so we'll take our first one. We'll go e to the x for the first, and y2, the second, will be e to the 2x. So there's y1 and y2. All right, I'm going to look back at the instructions for the Ronskian. Or not the instructions, the definition for it. So we got y1, y2, and then y1 prime, y2 prime on our second row. So 
So the derivatives are down below. These derivatives are super easy. We also need the constant column. I'm going to put quotes around constant because it's not actually constant in this case. But our constant column. What did that look like? It looked like a 0 followed by q over a2. So it was zero, uh, 0 first and then our q function divided by our leading coefficient. That was our a2. So I'm writing out that. So our q of x was that ugly sine function, sine of e to the negative x. What was a2? What was our leading coefficient? One. It was 1. It's the y. It's the leading derivative co a coefficient. So in this case, the y double prime has a 1 in front of it. So we get divided by 1, which of course is just it's the highest one. Yes, yeah, the coefficient of your highest order derivative. Usually it'll be the one at the front, because generally I'll write them, you know, decreasing, just like I'd write a polynomial. I'll try not to hide some high derivative, like, in the middle of all the terms. <coughs> and we have u1 prime. This is just the u1 prime up above from the Kramer's rule. So we have... Kramer's rule here. I'm just writing out these two right now. So we're going to take our, for u1 prime, we're going to take our column 1 and put the constant column in its place. So u1 goes 0, qx over a2, and then y2, y2 prime. So we can write this out. 0, y2 is e to the 2x and now q over a2 sine e to the negative x and 2e to the 2x. So that is u1 prime and I'm going to write out u2 prime. So this is y1 y1 prime in column 1 and then column 2 goes 0 qx over a2. So that's e to the x, e to the x in column 1, and then 0 uh, sine e to the negative x. Do you remember 2 by 2 derivatives? Not derivatives, determinants basically cross multiply. So I'll write that out in case you did forget. A, B, C, D. Determinant is A, D minus D, C. So hopefully you didn't forget that. Uh, just go, basically you're going across here. When you go upwards you're multiplying and subtracting. When you go downwards you're multiplying and adding. So we get 0 minus e to the 2x sine e to the negative x. And the second one, we're going to get e to the x, sine e to the negative x, minus 0. So now we have u1 and u2 prime. We just have to find their antiderivatives. <coughs> What's that? Oh, yes, absolutely. 
Wow. Yeah, so these are over W, over W, which I absolutely didn't do. So we need to compute the Ronskian. All right, so let's get that Ronskian. It's written out. We just I just never computed it. So 2e to the 3x <coughs> minus e to the 3x. Remember, you're multiplying bases, so you add powers. So we got x plus 2x is 3x. And 2 minus 1 is 1 e to the 3x. So that's our raw scan right there. Questions on the algebra there? How in the world are we going to integrate this ugly mess right here? Oh, you substitution. Doesn't look like any of the other forms that I remember from Calc 2. You could use the letter U. I think all the <coughs> U's we used had subscripts. So technically, I haven't used the letter U. I've used U1 and U2 everywhere. But if you want, uh, you can pick a different letter. W is not a great letter. I'm actively using W, so that's another bad letter. V, I don't think we've used recently, so maybe a V substitution. So this is the perfect U substitution or V substitution. It even takes care of that negative sign out front. So what I circled is dV. So we get integral sine V dV, which is negative cos V. And I wrote down earlier, don't worry about the constant here. <coughs> so that is negative cos <coughs> V negative X. So that is U1. So I think U2 is going to be very similar. You're going to need that same V substitution, and I think you need integration by parts after that. So it's a very good uh, problem to go home and practice integration by parts. So find U2 for homework. And when you found U2, combine this all back together. We know that Y is, uh, I think the order I wrote it was U1, Y1 plus u2, y2. So check, make sure your solution actually works in the original. <coughs> 